Yeah, how's everybody doing today? Okay, I just got in a couple products, light sim stuff, hardware. It's from Winwing, company out of China. This is the throttle setup. Basically, the throttle grip comes in a separate box from the body of the throttle. And there's probably a few wires and a few screws, nuts and bolts, things that need to be put in place to put it together. So I'm not gonna do a whole crazy unboxing thing because everybody's seen an unboxing, but I will do the video of the um of putting it together so what i'm going to do is zoom the camera in real quick everybody can take a look and then we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the thrustmaster a10 watt hog throttle okay well i apologize i said i was gonna not do an unboxing but i figured since everything's right here we'll just take a look at what's in the package i honestly haven't even looked myself as i was saying they definitely do a nice job with their packaging very careful at how they do things from what I have read the body of the throttle it's pretty much the identical size the bottom plate as the Thrustmaster A10 the Warthog the difference being is the build quality the Warthog is an excellent product for a mid-range probably a little bit overpriced I would think but it is still an excellent product for a mid-range HOTAS setup onward to that so we've got in the took the time to give a 90 degree angle on the USB-A. All right, we have some suction cup and it comes with the tools that you need. Basically it's two Allen keys, I guess. All right, so those are gonna go there, there. The feet I won't be using. Oh, wow. Oh, it is night and day. I'm gonna have to flip this on its side to show you basically how it is packaged very nice definitely it's the same size it's not as much metal it's lighter the Thrustmaster but you can see on here everything's metal the body itself is a plastic body and you have these little, I don't know what they call them, these wires would be like probably a USB type adapter. Okay, so you can tell all of this is metal. Without the, the handles, it's gonna be difficult. Check these buttons. Nice and crisp, nice snap. Not mushy at all. Yeah, everything's nice and solid. So definitely good quality stuff they're using. So that's that for that. So we have those three things came in that box. Let's get over to the throttle handle. See, I try to keep the boxes in case there's ever a problem. Okay, so it marks off pretty much what it comes with. It's basically the handle and, oh, I got the finger lift for the F18 because that's pretty much what I use. So let's get this open. So on the inside, we have a box over here. I imagine the throttle handle, one of them's in here. We'll take a look at them in a minute. Lots of styrofoam. Nope, both handles are in here. One and two. So as far as pricing goes, for the quality you get with this, to spend a couple more dollars to buy this versus the Thrustmaster and the the amount of work that goes into it, it's pretty much night and day. This is this is different than the older style. I know the Verpals used to be this exact same shape. I'm, I'm glad it's lighter because that other one is just, it, the whole body's steel, but I did take a peek inside of it and there's a lot of the old grease with the plastic gears and stuff. I wasn't too thrilled with that. With this, I can already see everything in here is metal. Okay, quality, wow. Okay, needless to say, there's very limited directions on how to do this. You don't really get nothing, but it's really just a matter of a couple of screws and pretty much getting it right. As far as these go, I was looking at it and obviously the finger lift is going to go this way because you can tell it's going to line up with your cable goes, it's going to be inserted in here. So there's a indent where your cable will fit. Another thing is you always be careful with these. You don't want to strip them. You don't get too many extras. 
you know, you want to do it in a certain order, which you really don't get. Like I said, there's not a lot of information out there on it. I watched a couple videos. So, this one's going to go on this way. Yeah, that's an absolute. And then your throttle cable is going to go on the inside, as so. So I would put these back in. I hope I don't have to do this over again. So once you get them snug, I wouldn't recommend going crazy with the Titan and give them a little quarter turn. Double check. Make sure it's seated good. And here we are. So that's going to lift over the stop part, the stopper on your detent. Okay, here we are on to the second one. Oh, I see. And you can also use an Allen key to set the friction on each side. So if you want to use them in dual, because obviously the F-18 has two jets engines, so you can one dies you can operate the other one this one right here it goes on here so you can put another detent so when you come back forward boom then more oh, it's not there yeah, clips right in okay so we'll put this through here what am i not doing right here <laughs> Using the wrong size, talking away, I'm just spinning it like a retard. Okay. So I got this one pushed as far forward as it'll go. This one's up so I can put the screw in. And we're going to leave that at that. Now in the older ones, this plate was made of like a metal like this. This aluminum. It's like a cast aluminum. Now it's made of a composite remember whenever you use these make sure it's good and snug side and we got our cable be very careful how you put these in there's a little notch on the wire there falls right in push it in before you screw it that didn't come out. <laughs> I get dirty mine. Okay. I like, I, I know in the older ones they had like holes and went directly in. Now they've designed it so it's got notches. Obviously they're always hard at work figuring out the best way they can do things. Yeah, see, yeah, you wouldn't have got that on without definitely. Now you don't need the detent. That's, it's not mandatory to have. I, I wanted it to get the most realistic version of the throttle, but yeah, you don't need the detent here. You, if you just want to move the throttle back and forth, it will still work just fine. Yeah, see it fits right on. You can see how it slides right in there, here. I know my hand's probably in the way, so I'll hold this one here and bring it right up and You line it up and bingo, it's in. All the holes are countersunk. All the screws are beveled, so everything goes in nice and flat. It's nice to see some nice thought, some good thought going into their product. Now you never force screws in for one thing. If they start threading on their own, you're golden, you're golden, but you don't want to ever force anything. Okay, this one's ready to go. It goes right in there. Bingo. Some of these are a little bit longer than the other ones. So you just basically line it up a bit. Take a peek. Get the hole lined up. Handle one, voila.
So this is how your detent would work. Wow, that's very nice. So I don't want to push it too forward. So that's basically going to be a stopper. So click, you come all the way back, that's stopped. And you go forward, click, click, and now you're stopped. You want to go f into afterburner, you pick up, go forward. Pull back, you get a little jump. There and there. Not bad. Well, definitely very. I can probably use the Allen key to get a little less friction. Those are really a little more than what I like, but let me see if this is the Allen key for that. I think I'll leave it right like that for now. So that's going to go there. This sucker goes all the way through. And it goes into a screw that you place in the bottom, which is this little baby right here. This is going to go in here first. I think grabs easy. Okay. So that's one. go berserk on it. Put the screw in first before you push it all the way through. Time consuming. This can go back there. Can go forward. Okay, that's where I want it. I want that one all the way back there. And then I can tighten it. It'll do. So that goes forward. This right here would be idle. That would be military power, they call it. That's full power without afterburners. Then you pick it up, all the way forward, afterburners. Cable first. Look at exactly where the three prongs are and where your little thingamajiggy denty is. You see it lines up metal to metal. Give it a little push in. And you're off to the races. That's it, just a couple screws and we're done. Okay, so this one goes right in here. So, I guess depending on how you do it. Well, that magnet's strong. So, we got this one there. Copy that. Don't want to put one in cross threaded. It definitely wouldn't be healthy. Looks like it sits a little bit further away. Okay, so here we are. Oh, much easier now. So once you got them together. Got to remember to put your lock. Yep, pops right back <laughs> if you don't have it locked down. Yeah. Hope it doesn't come up at all. Well, looks like it's in there pretty good. So that's how it works. Up, out, and you can use them independently. I guess it had to be set off like that. Yeah, see this one doesn't push up against the inside like this side did. See, they put a little cut out because this one sits in deeper. So a little indent of the shape of the coupling. And on this one, yeah, it doesn't even touch. It's not needed at all. That's what had me a little bit confused because I was like, how come it ain't there? So here's where we are. You're all the way back, shutting your engines off pretty much where they'd set. You want to go to idle, you're at idle. Full power, lift, afterburners. Very nice. Okay. Here we are on my final thoughts. Quick rundown. 
on some of the differences between the wind wing and the Thrustmaster. The first thing is Thrustmaster, nine pounds, four ounces. Wind wing, four pounds, two ounces. The reason this is so heavy is the body and the back plate on this is all steel. And I have already opened it up. The inside is still those plastic gears and stuff, although there is a little bit of metal in it. On the other hand, forward thinking, the body on this is all a very heavy duty plastic. And the insides of this are all, mostly all metal, other than the wires. The knobs are metal, on aluminum. These are metal, the grips, the body, obviously, it's a heavy type of comp, um, composite plastic or something. The quality of the switches, we're going to take a listen. First, we're going to listen to some of the back press buttons you press on the Thrustmaster. Now, remember, this is brand new. This isn't old and worn out. Wind wing. Thrustmaster. Mushy sounding. Wind wing. Okay, that's just push buttons in. Now we're going to look at toggles. The difference in toggle quality is incredible. Sounds pretty good, huh? Thrustmaster. Wind wing three-way switches so you can have an up and down. With this, it's only one way with the Thrustmaster. Nice and crisp. Okay. This is friction for the stick, for the handles, all the way tight. It's the same as all the way loose. On this one, we've already seen at the beginning of the video, just a slight turn makes it almost easy, too easy to move or impossible, but you can find your happy medium. So the friction on the wind wing works. The friction on this Dustmaster hardly doesn't. Halfway with your flaps, you want your flaps set to halfway, which is pretty much automatic. Well, no, automatic's automatic. Halfway is for takeoff. Full flaps is all the way down for stopping auto is when you're flying you want your flaps to be able to adjust with your flight quality it's got a nice texture to the wind wing and the side buttons versus <clears throat> so the side buttons are much more realistic on the wind wing Nice and crisp. This is probably more identical to what the 18s are like. And your front buttons. Not mushy, nice and clear. Now here's a big improvement that Thrustmaster did make. I ordered this brand new and the first thing I noticed was a lot of people used to reorder the slew button because it was more like a, a flat button with a little nipple in the middle of it and that's how people controlled it. So they would order it for $50 and they would have to replace it with this button. Now Thrustmaster replaced it and they're selling it which is a good thing.
So, air to air, air to ground. We don't have that on this. And another thing I want to look at real quick, I want to show you is see the switches? All they did was take some plastic buttons. Again, I'm not ranking on them, I'm just saying they're forward thinking. On this, you literally have thought put into the switches. They're what you would find on a joystick or on a throttle. These are basically just toggles with caps on them. See? I'm sure you can see that. That's all it is. I get it, it's a good idea if you, you know, it's something I would have thought about and probably tried to come up with, but uh, you know, that's for being home. And they're all like that, except for the four-way hat right here. All right, so my thoughts is half the weight, double the quality. I'm gonna say outstanding top of the line, mid-range, but still very, very good. It's better than $50 ones, I can tell you that right now. These are pretty hollow. These have a nice solid feel to them. This is kind of like a metal too. So they did use a lot of metal, probably way too much. They really didn't need to. It's the insides that matter. Even this side button for the flaps, that's nothing but a toggle. That's all it is. You can see it right from there. They just put a button on it. With this one, you have real switches. It's notchy. Me and my sound effects. All right, so that's about all I can come up with. I'm going to get this hooked up. Probably not going to really do another video until I get this all configured, and then I'll go over how I got it configured. But until then, I hope this helps somebody. I really do. I really hope it helps somebody because when I need help and I go on the internet and I look at the thousands and hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube and you can't find one that relates to something you need, it's pretty disappointing. Especially when you're working with something as popular as this. I mean, this is not like, in the flight sim world, this is like the shit right here. Th this is big. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is, this is expensive, way too, too expensive. Y you can buy this for the same quality. You're just not going to get the same quality, and I mean quality as in just because something's heavy doesn't mean it's good. You've got to look at how long, how good the switches are, how long they're going to last, what they do, how they work. You can definitely see it's a world of a difference here. Regular screws holding the top down. Everything on here is all chrome. Allen wrench. Some of them are countersunk, some of them are above. This is an artificial plate. These are all real plates. I could just go on all day long. I'm not trying to, again, I'm really not trying to put Thrustmaster down. They deal on a large worldwide qu quantity of flight sticks. To sit down and do what a company like this does would be very difficult for them and very expensive. I think in the long run it would be very much worth it for them. But All right, so we're going to wrap it up there. It's getting late already and I've got to uh, still do some things. So everybody, you have a great day. I hope, again, I hope I was able to help someone. You guys are awesome. Don't forget, leave a like or even a comment and let me know what you thought about the detail that went into how to make this and if I was specific enough or if I needed work in some certain areas, I'm always open, not criticism, but I'm always open for suggestions. So everybody have a nice day, week, night, whatever time you watch this. Peace.